gonna be modeling up this uh, rack that was out in the yard and this lends itself to SolidWorks weld mats. I've got a couple pictures uh, for the most part most of it is a uh, 4 by 4 by quarter inch thick uh, square tubing there's a couple little end plates that keep everything from uh, falling off and for the most part all of the uh, vertical sections are just about the same so I should just be able to do one and then uh, use some patterning features to finish out the rest so let's get started I'm going to start off with a new part file and since I'm going to be using the weld mitts this kind of lends itself to a uh, 3D sketch so I'm going to start out with the uh, overall size and I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, right plane before I hit the rectangle command so that way it starts the rectangle on that right side plane there then I'll go ahead and dimension it height of this thing is going to be 96 and the width is going to be 12 feet so that pretty much sizes my rectangle and the vertical height of this is going to change that to construction it's not going to be used and then I need to draw the rest of the stuff uh, for the most part on the front plane so I'm going to go ahead and pre-select that plane go ahead and go into the line command and I'm just going to start off with just a regular line We'll go ahead and constrain that, select the line, hold control and pick on the origin. We'll do a midpoint relationship. And then we'll go ahead and draw out our other sections here. I'm not going to make them exact because I like to use my relationships to watch them move into position. So I've got a couple more lines here. I'm going to click and hold so that way it picks up the pencil. Then I just need to trim these up. I'm going to put this guy into position. Hold down control, make that a midpoint. So that way we've pretty much structured his height. I'm going to make these angled pieces uh, equal they have the same length. We're also going to do the same thing for each of these segments. So the collinear relationship uh, stood, but now we're going to make them equal. Let's go ahead and dimension it. And a couple more. And one more dimension. The overall width, make it 96 also. And I still have some blue geometry out here, which means it's under constrained. We'll see if I just uh, mispicked something. It uh, looks like this guy is not along the Y, so we'll make him along the Y. And now everything is black and it's fully defined. So now we can go right into uh, creating our weldment. So I'll go to the weldments tab, click on structural member, and we'll pick a uh, square tubing. Do a 4 by 4 by quarter. And I'm going to go ahead and start out with this uh, slightly vertical member there. And I want the overall dimension uh, to guide the whole outside of this thing. So i got to do a couple things. First, I'm going to, you can kind of see how it rotated just slightly. So I'm going to click in the alignment area, go ahead and select on that. And now it's straight up and down aligned with that guy. Then I'm going to locate the profile. And of course, I want it to go to the inside there. And I'm leaving this little two inch gap so I can put a uh, horizontal member uh, inside this. So that guy looks good. 
and we'll do a new group select on that I want this line to be the bottom so I'm going to locate the profile select on that bottom left corner so it moves it on up and you'll notice that these guys since they're with the uh, the same structural member feature uh, they automatically trim off on each other next we'll go ahead and select a new group I'll pick on that center line again locating the profile this one I do want it to be centered but I want the bottom to line up on the bottom of the other member there as well alright and one more group it's going to be these uh, racks I'm going to locate the profile this is going to be the bottom left and you can see how they're automatically trimming off uh, on there now these I can do all in the same group so I'll just select that and they're mirrored to the other side so I'm not going to put the other ones in on the other side yet so go ahead and say OK out of that and now I'll go ahead and go into uh, structural member one more time this time I'm going to get a rectangular section it's going to be a 4 by 2 by quarter and I'm just going to select on this center beam do a new uh, locate profile and I want it centered on the top of that guy so that looks good go in the full length I'll go ahead and turn off my uh, 3d sketch for now and if you zoom in here you'll see that the uh, the top of this goes beyond that because it was a uh, uh, rectangular section was going normal to that that 3d sketch line so I want to go ahead and trim that off so use the trim and extend tool I want this body to be trimmed and I'm going to go ahead and trim it off with a, a face or plane and even though I select on this top face it's as if that thing goes on forever and ever now when it slides slices through there I actually have two little solids you can see this little little tiny one up here at the top and this one down here SOLIDWORKS gives us these little tabs so we can either keep or discard uh, certain bodies that we do or don't want and it got it correct so I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And now I've got it trimmed off nicely on the top. Next, I'm going to come down and put some end caps on. And instead of using the end cap function, uh, I need it to go beyond this, uh, uh, the actual tube. So I'm going to have to customly make it. So I'm going to go ahead and select on that, do a new sketch. And I'm just going to get the regular rectangle command. Just start at the origin there, drag that up. I'm going to go ahead and select on both these edges to make it collinear and then put a dimension let's rotate around a little bit there we go and get that edge and they're just going to stick up uh, one inch above that so we're, we're just going to do it extrude and since we're in a weld mitt you'll notice the merge result is automatically unchecked so I'm going to go ahead and extrude this guy a quarter of an inch and we'll hit OK Now I need this exact same uh, end cap on all of these three, but there are different lengths and different heights and things like that. Um, we do have a kind of a neat way we could do this though, and that's with a sketch driven uh, pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, 3D sketch, and I'm going to create a new 3D sketch, and I'm just going to get the point command, and I'm just going to place some points at the end points of each of these little lines sticking out. and we'll finish out of that sketch. We'll go ahead and turn our original one off and you'll see I've just got pretty much three little points out here and with that you can go into the features do a sketch driven pattern the sketch that I'm going to use is going to be the 3D sketch and then make sure you do bodies to pattern I'm going to select on that body and then the only tricky point is that I can't really use the centroid so you'll notice how it kind of uses the centroid of that body the position where this guy belongs so I need to do a selected point and I'm going to select on the bottom left hand corner of that plate because that's the exact location as where all those points are so you see now they're nicely aligned so we'll go ahead and say OK to that go ahead and go to a quick isometric view now I've got a couple other open uh, pieces on here so I'm going to I'll just use the end cap functionality and I'll select on the top of that and we have two options. One that the caps can just sit on top of that, uh, but I need this to fit inside of a container. So I'm going to flip it so it goes down. So it's actually going to remove the top quarter of that, or the 
quarter inch of that. And of course I got to do the same thing on this piece right here. So we'll do both sections and we'll just hit OK. We'll go ahead and turn off my 3D sketch and we're ready to uh, do a mirror. So I'm going to do a mirror about the center. And get the right side plane and of course make sure you're doing bodies to mirror. That way I can select all these bodies. And that gives me everything on the other side. So now the tricky part is I need uh, and I think the best way to do this is just going to be regular uh, linear pattern. So I'm just going to do a uh, linear pattern. And just pick a direction. And I'm going to do uh, bodies to pattern. And I've got to go out here and select on all these bodies. And take a look at your preview. Make sure you didn't forget anything. I almost forgot the uh, top little pieces there. And I'm just going to put two of them out. Uh, I don't know. Let's do 36, actually three. You need to get three of them in there. And I'm just going to accept it as it is. Now it's not right, but now I can go back in and we turn on our uh, feature dimensions. So that way I can see everything. I can see this overall length right here and this guy. So we'll just uh, double click the dimension. I'm going to hit the equal sign just like in Microsoft Excel. Go ahead and select on that dimension. And it's going to be divided by 2. And I'll put all this in brackets just to keep it a little cleaner. Parentheses. And then I also need to do half the, uh, half the thickness of my, uh, my beams right here. So since they're 4 inches, I'm going to subtract 2. And I think that'll do it. We'll go ahead and say OK. And we'll rebuild and we'll see if that's right. Now rotate around and that looks like it lines up perfect. Alright, so anytime I change this dimension, uh, this one's always going to update. I don't have to worry about it being wrong. It's always right. Now it looks like everything's good and done, but I've got one more little issue. I've got this bottom beam. It's actually going through uh, some of these other parts. So again, we'll just go to Weldments, do Trim and Extend. This is going to be the beam I want to trim. And I'm going to use a facer plane here as well. And I'm going to select on a couple of these faces. So that way it's discarding this end piece. It's going to keep this middle big section. Notice this small little piece it's discarding. And then of course it's keeping the big one. So it, again, it guessed correctly. And we'll say OK. And that should do it. We'll go ahead and turn off our annotations. We need to update our cuts list. So now everything is well organized into nice little neat pieces. Got 24 of those little guys on there. So it's pretty nice of SolidWorks to be able to add all that stuff up for me. I don't have to worry about it. And looks like I got it done. So let's go ahead and finish this out. We'll start a uh, quick drawing. Of course, we've got to save it first. And we'll save it as its part number. Go ahead and add a little description. And now we're ready to do the drawing. Just use the default template. I'll do a B size. We'll go ahead and drag and drop the isometric view out there. Shade it. We'll go ahead and scale it up a little bit. Try a 1 to 20. That looks pretty good. And then we'll go into our weldments cuts list. Select the view. And I'll just accept the default. Squish it up just a little bit. And 
and you can see I don't have all the uh, descriptions for the end plate so I'll go back to the model and I'm just gonna right click on that and say create bounding box and we'll go ahead and switch back to the drawing we'll go ahead and tell it to update and now each of my different plates has a, a length, width, and a, a thickness there. I'm going to go ahead and add a, a little detail view in this little area. So that way when I put my balloons out here, I can balloon to some of these components here. And then we'll balloon the, le the rest of them out here. Go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And it looks like I'm missing uh, part number eight. Uh, which is this vertical riser. So let's go ahead and add one more balloon out here. Go ahead and drag this one down and reattach it. And then I'm going to use my magnet lines. Uh, you just start a point somewhere out in space and as you get close to a balloon it'll automatically engage and kind of stick to it. So that way I can make sure that these guys are all uh, in this case horizontally aligned. I'll go ahead and do another one get these two, the three, and we'll make sure these two are aligned as well. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and add a new sheet. We'll go ahead and drag and drop a uh, front view. That way we can get a top right side and I'll go ahead and put my isometric out there again then we'll use our model items I'm just going to say entire model all views then we just need to spend some time cleaning up some of the dimensions so in no time at all you should be able to have some pretty good looking drawings And for some other tips on uh, the detailing, uh, take a look at some of our other videos on YouTube at Progression Support. Enjoy.